Okay, number two, we're given a uh, sequence that's defined recursively. So we're told that a1 equals 10, and then we're told that to go from a n to a n plus 1, we're going to be adding 2, and that's valid for all n bigger than or equal to 1. So in part a, we're asked to write out the first five terms of the sequence. So the first term is a gimme. It's 10. To figure out the next term, I'm going to plug n equals 1 into the recursion formula. I plug n equals 1 into this, I get a sub 1 plus 1 is equal to a sub 1 plus 2. In other words, a sub 2 is a sub 1 plus 2. So a sub 2 is a sub 1, which we're given to be 10, plus 2, which is 12. For n equals 2, I plug that into the recursion equation. a sub 2 plus 1 is a sub 2 plus 2. So a sub 3 is a sub 2, which is 12, plus 2. So a sub 3 is 14. For n equals 3, you substitute a sub 3 plus 1 is equal to a sub 3 plus 2. In other words, a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 plus 2. a sub 3 we found to be 14, so that means a sub 4 is 16. For n equals 4, a sub 4 plus 1 is equal to a sub 4 plus 2. So a sub 5 is a sub 4 plus 2. But what was a sub 4? 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. So if you notice, the way we're going from a n to a n plus 1 is we're always adding 2. And our sequence is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Is the sequence arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Well, it's arithmetic. Why is it arithmetic? Because the way we're going from one to the next is we're always adding two. That's exactly what this recursion formula is telling us. To be arithmetic, a sub n plus one minus a sub n has to always be the same number d. That's the common difference. If I look at my recursive formula, when I subtract off a sub n from both sides, that's exactly what I've got. Okay, so the common difference is 2. Find an explicit formula for a sub n. So I need a sub n equals something. We know from our um, Section 9.1, that for an arithmetic sequence, we can write an arithmetic sequence a sub n equals uh, a1 plus n minus 1 d, where this is the first term in the sequence and d is the common difference. The first term we know is 10, and we've just determined that the common difference is 2. So I multiply this out, I'm going to have 2n. I've got 10 minus 2, that's plus 8, and this formula is valid for the n bigger than or equal to 1. And remember, in order to check this, when in doubt, write it out. Substitute in n equals 1. You get 2 times 1 is 2, plus 8 is 10. Plug in n equals 2, you get out 12. n equals 3, um, you get 14, and etc. So you get the same list of numbers that we had before. So that'll do it for number two. Alright, number three, we're asked to find an explicit formula for this sequence. So we check to see is it arithmetic? And the answer is no. If I take negative two-fifths minus one, I get a different number than if I take four-ninths minus two-fifths. Is it geometric? Uh, no. Um, so what do we do at this point? Well, we try to find, we have to find the pattern. 
equal. So one thing we can do with fractions, sometimes it's helpful, is to write um, the first term as a fraction, in this case 1. So we'll write that as 1 over 1. And we'll see if we can find any uh, pattern at all. So we'll associate the negatives with the numerators. And see if we can find any patterns in the numerators and any patterns in the denominators. So if I look at the numerator only, I see a pattern. The way I'm going from 1 to negative 2 is multiplying by negative 2. If I multiply by negative 2 again, I get to 4. By negative 2 again, I get to negative 8, etc. So for the numerator, I have a geometric sequence where the first term is 1 and the common ratio is negative 2. All right. What about the denominator? There I'm adding 4, adding 4, adding 4, adding 4. So the denominator is an arithmetic sequence where the first term is 1 and the common difference is 4. Okay, so the numerator, if I want a formula for the numerator, it's going to be a1 r to the n minus 1, which is just 1 times negative 2 to the n minus 1. And for the denominator, it's an arithmetic sequence. It's a1 plus n minus 1d, which would be 1 plus n minus 1 times 4, which would give me 4n minus 3 for n bigger than or equal to 1. So you put this whole thing together, and I get my final answer, a n, in the numerator. It's negative 2 to the n minus 1, and in the denominator, it's 4n minus 3, and this formula is valid for n bigger than or equal to 1. This is just one of infinitely many answers for this. I can check to see if the formula generates the same terms I see up here. I'll plug in n equals 1, I get a 1 over 1, which is 1. I plug in n equals 2, I get a negative 2 over 5, so on and so forth. Okay, And there it is. That's it for number 3. That's it for Checkpoint Quiz 9.1.